Hi, beautiful. I'm back to rate more hair routines. Today, we're rating curly hair routines. People blow drying their hair from curly to straight and or flat ironing their hair and or blow drying and flat ironing. We'll see what happens today. A lot's gonna happen. I am gonna be very, very critical on these routines. Why, you ask? Because it's more fun that way. And honestly, there's always room for growth with a hair care routine or with anything that is beauty. So I'm gonna be hypercritical. <laughs> really be hard on these girls, look at every single thing they're doing within their hair care routines and break it all down for you, tell you why it's right, why it's wrong. We're gonna start with 10 points on the board for each girl and every time one of these girls does something wrong or something that I think they could have done better with their hair care routines, they're going to lose a point. And out of the three girls we watched today, we'll see which girl has the best hair care routine for curly to straight blow drying. And hopefully you'll learn a few things along the way. Let's do it. Woo! Our first contestant on our game show today is Gabriella Great House. And her video is called How To Easy Blowout Blow Dry Routine Wet to Dry Salon Quality Tutorial. <gasps> She's claiming this sh is salon quality, so it better be really really good. Should I be even more hard on her because of that title? Should I be? I'm feeling a little bit mean today, so you're in luck. And let's get 10 points on the board. Let's see how many points of those she can keep throughout this video. So today I'm jumping straight okay. into the video. I'm going to show you how I give myself the perfect salon blow dry at Home. Off the bat, we're working with, you know, wavy hair. Uh, it's definitely an irregular wave. Some pieces that are very wavy, some pieces that are kind of straight, some pieces that are very curly. Her roots definitely look a little bit frizzy. She's going to really need to work those roots in order to get a very good salon quality blowout. She's going in with the detangler first. Let's see how she detangles. So I'm starting off with freshly washed hair and I'm going to go ahead and detangle my hair using a tangle tea. I love that. I'm going to use a heat protector. This is a must, you guys. We're off to I'm a great start, huh? Now to evenly disperse this into my hair, I'm going to brush my hair out once again. I love this. I'm using some coconut oil to give my hair some shine. I love coconut oil. It smells amazing. And I made sure to apply only a tiny amount as I didn't want my hair to look oily. Okay, so let's recap all of that. So she did a lot of great things here. So she first went in with the proper brush to detangle her hair. If you know me, you know that I hate when people use the incorrect brushes with say detangling. People will go in with a ceramic round brush to detangle their hair when it's wet. And let's not do that anymore. How about that? Because uh, you're just not gonna detangle very good. And it's just not good for your hair. You're really pulling on those hair strands with those metal fibers. So a tangle teaser is a great option for when you are detangling your hair. Then she sprayed a heat protector in um, and she really distributed that heat protection beautifully. What heat protector does is kind of put a coating on the hair. That way the heat protectant is protecting the hair because it is putting a film sort of on the hair to protect it from heat damage. Then she went in with a brush again and kind of distributed that product through. I always like to recommend to brush products through after you apply them. That way you know it's getting on every single hair strand. After that, we got a little bit interesting because um, she used coconut oil. The thing is with coconut oil, and I'm not a coconut oil scientist here. I'm just telling you from my experience with coconut oil, I feel like it actually doesn't hydrate at all. What coconut oil does is trap in hydration and it doesn't allow for more hydration to come into the hair. You know, I would have liked her to have prepped with say like an argan oil or oil that really gets sucked in by the hair and doesn't just leave a coating on the hair. I know a lot of you probably love coconut oil and that's gonna be triggering for a lot of you, but there's applications for it. This isn't one of them for me. So let's take off a point. We're at nine points now. Again, I'm being very critical. Let's keep watching. To begin, I start off by sectioning my hair, taking a small section on the highest heat setting on my blow dry. No. I start blow dry. No. 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 Really close to my hair. <laughs> Completely dry, I move down slowly, feeding my hair through the brush. Yeah, as you can see, I feed my hair down, then I roll it back up, and I do this repeated. Hold on. 
completely satisfied with how it looks. Now to give my hair the perfect curls, I roll the barrel all the way up and I clip it in place. Then I release the button and I remove the handle. Whoa. So she takes a section, does something that I'm 100% gonna take a point out for. Let's lose a point there and then I'll explain. We're at eight points now. This irks me so much, but she used a blow dryer without a concentrator nozzle on it. Ah, oh, so with blow dryers, right? You see those little bars inside the blow dryer. If you look down right in the blow dryer, there's usually like metal bars. Those things heat up so hot and what happens without a concentrator nozzle is you end up like putting the hair directly into those hot bars which ends up really like burning the hair and it's really not good for it the concentrator nozzle is there so it directs the heat perfectly throughout the hair strand and you get a really wide uh, spread of hot air on the hair with a concentrated nozzle and you aren't going to get that without it and you're also more likely to burn the hair without it Ooh, when clients tell me they lost their concentrator nozzle and they don't use it at home i'm like get a new one you have to she does have great technique. I didn't really love her sectioning. I do wish she kind of went around her hairline first because what tends to happen is by the time you get to the front hairline, um, it's already dried. And with curly or frizzy hair, you want to really hit that hairline first while your hair is wet and more malleable. Otherwise, you're going to kind of let your hair dry in that frizzy state. And then you're going to try and take that frizz out again. And it's just not going to work as well. Going on the hairline up here and back here first is the best idea. Um, you can do a halo section. You guys know I I love that section where you just take a, a perimeter section first. But yeah, I mean, her technique is awesome with the blow dry. I thought she did a great job with that. It was very impressive. That's not easy to do. Then she left the round brush in the hair, which is a cool technique and a lot of professional hairstyles do it. I don't because I'm worried the brush is gonna get caught in the hair too much, but she seems to have a really good grasp on how to do that. And let's see how it comes out. Let's see what else she does. Whichever barrel I reach for is the one. Very small sections. And not having a routine, for instance, only using the large barrels on the bottom section of my hair and the mediums on top means that the blow dry looks effortless and I rather prefer it that way. As I don't have enough barrels for all of the sections of my hair, I remove a barrel from one section of the bottom of my hair and then I blow dry another section. So that seems like a lot of work. <laughs> completely blow dried all of the sections. Okay, because this isn't very practical, <laughs> I'm gonna take a point off. That leaves you at a seven. This just seems like such a waste of time to me. If you look at her head, she just has so much going on. You saw the way it came out when she unraveled the curl. It didn't look much different than before she left the curler in her hair. I just don't think it was needed or necessary or whatever. It might give her a little bit more volume, but there's just easier ways to do this. I'm not a fan of leaving brushes in hair. I think it looks kind of weird and tacky, but that's just me. But you can use curlers, you can use Velcro curlers, you can use regular curlers, and those are much easier to apply in my opinion. I like the way she is rolling the hair over the rollers instead of under. This way she's gonna get a lot more volume this way than if she did it this way, it would be depleting volume. So that's great too. Now, once I reach my baby, hairs i blow dry backwards in order to ensure that great technique hairs are completely straight and then i just wish she had a concentrator on there but the same previous steps and i clip it in Place. Okay, see how she put that roller underneath and raveled it up instead of going the hair over the roller? She's gonna deplete all of that volume there. Maybe she wanted to do that though, so I'm not gonna take a point off for that. I don't think she was going for a really flat look here. I think we were going for volume, but we don't know that, so I'm not gonna take a point off. And I like the way she's blow drying the hair up right here um, in kind of a smaller section. That way she gets a lot of volume here and she gets that really nice blowout bang. Just definitely be careful with blow drying the hair upwards because you'll get a lot of frizzing at the root. Three to five minutes. She's now cooling down the hair. Hold, and then I slowly Great job. move them. Be careful as this can be a little bit tricky. This is why I don't do this. So take little pieces of hair out first if this does happen until they have all come off. Oh my God, this is triggering for me. So I mean like I've probably done this once in my life where I will leave the brush in the hair. And I think that one time I did it, the brush wouldn't come out of this girl's hair and I was sweating, dripping sweat down my face. I was like, how do I tell this girl I can't get the brush out of her hair? What do I do, what do I do, what do I do? And I think that's why why I hate this technique so much. It's really scary. You can really get brushes stuck in people's hair. I stay away. And now to finish off, I just shake my roots and then I apply- Oh my God. Not oil. 
to finish this look. Wow. And this is how I achieve my effortless salon blow dry at home. It was pretty. It really was. It was really pretty. I do have critiques, however, obviously. The coconut oil at the end, not a huge fan. I think she would be better off with something that is hydrating as well as styling. I mean, just adds a little bit more creamy texture. I can always recommend my own products. You can use Electric Rain by Ex Mondo. Really great for after blowouts and pre blowout and not weigh the hair down, but add necessary moisture. But you could tell that she had kind of no rhyme or reason for the curler she set in her hair. She said, she was kind of just using whatever was available. Like she used a bigger curling rod here and a smaller one up here. I mean, it depends what kind of look we're going for, but with this, I probably would have tried to stick with always just the big ones or the small ones. And in this case, I really wouldn't do that. It would just be like kind of a weird blowout. It wouldn't really make any sense. And if you want that really nice voluminous little bit of wave blowout with a lot of body, you're gonna want to use, you know, big curling rods um, or big barrel uh, brushes and the hair in this case. I'm gonna take a point off for that because she kind of had no rhyme or reason for what she did with those curlers. I don't know what you call them. And you could kind of tell in the end result, it was kind of like an irregular wave. But overall, I think she did an awesome, awesome job. I think that she really has great technique and has a lot of experience with blow drying curly hair. I love the way she really got those roots and attacked them, really got that frizz down. Do I think it could be better? Yeah, everybody's routine could be a little bit better, but it was pretty dope. This is really hard to do. If I had hair like that, I probably wouldn't be able to do it. So props to you, Gabriella. Great job. I think you did an amazing job, but I'm just being critical. So that is her score and we'll move on to our next girl. Let's see how she does. Our next contestant on is your hair routine good enough <laughs> is joy before her that is the channel and it is called my blow dry routine new muse self hair stealth hair dryer okay let's put 10 points on the board let's see how many points she loses before <laughs> we're finished i haven't seen my hair straight in so long it's been over a year oh this is fun and i want to see my length and i also have me too hair i'm um, straightened or blown out with my new color the last time i straightened my hair was over a year <gasps> What? So ever since I went darker, a little darker to light brown, I still have some blonde highlights. We are starting off with curl slash wave. Her hair is quite frizzy. However, most of the frizz is sort of concentrated towards the bottom of her hair, whereas the top of her hair near the roots doesn't seem to be as frizzy, which is great. That's gonna be a lot easier for her to blow dry because she doesn't have those really frizzy roots. And let's see what else happens here, shall we? I haven't seen like this color. So if you have natural curly hair like me, I always recommend you prepare your hair before you put heat on it. So I'll just get started. I'm going to section my hair and then start blow drying. I'll most likely be using the first fan speed and the hottest heat setting. And to take a point off, we are one minute and 50 seconds in past the intro <laughs> and we're taking a point off. You know why? Do you know why? Can you guess why? Because her hair is way too damn dry to be blow drying right now. With wavy curly hair, hair that is kinky, hair that is a little bit frizzy, don't blow dry it if it's more than 70% dry. Don't, do you wanna work with it a bit more wet than when you're working with straight hair. The hair is a lot more malleable when it is wet. You're gonna be able to really pull that curl out really nice and taut and get that heat in there very close and get it really straight when it's wet or damp. But when it's dry, it's gonna be a lot harder for you to get that curl out and get rid of that frizz. The blow just doesn't last as long unless you get that heat in there when it's really wet. But at least she's using a concentrated nozzle. I'm, I'm happy with that. Okay, so starting off, what I do is I put not much sectioning going on here. Directly on my hair. We're taking off a point for that because the sectioning is terrible. Use a halo section or just section out nicer. That leaves her with eight points. And I try to use some tension by pulling the brush away from my head and bringing the nozzle to my hair and close to the brush. Okay guys, so here's the thing. I'll be honest with you. I have never been good at blowouts. It's just not something that I like to do. So she said that she's not good at blow drying. She knows that. I'm gonna have to disagree with her. This technique is quite advanced 
romance, in my opinion. Um, she is going really close to those roots. She's directing the blow dryer down so that all that frizz gets pushed to the back of her hair and it leaves the top of her hair with a very smooth, shiny finish. I think she's doing a great job. Her sections are way too small, I must say. She's wasting her time there. And for that, I'm gonna take a point off because we're being very critical. God, you're just wasting so much time, please. The thing is, when you have a better foundation, when you section correctly, when you are taking large enough pieces and not too large of pieces. When you're doing all these things correctly, your blow dry routine will go by a lot faster, all right? So making sure that your sections are nice, a little bit less than an inch thick. I mean, it really depends on what kind of hair you have, but for her, probably like a little bit less than an inch wide section. Three quarters of an inch is probably good. And then working um, within the length of the brush is best. That way you can work those individual sections for a longer period of time. And you're just gonna get a faster result that way. And it's gonna be a lot more precise and even if you're taking the same sections on each side. You know what I mean? There's definitely not a lot of thought going into the way she's sectioning, which is stressing me out. Oh, oh, it's getting a little rough here. All right, um, all right, uh, all right, okay, all right. Those are really small sections we're taking. She didn't tell us if she prepped the hair with any kind of serum or cream or, you know, styling product. So I'm gonna take a point off that. I totally forgot about that for a second because I was paying attention to her blow dry technique, but that leaves her with a six here. And I just feel like her hair looks very dry and like there's really no shine to it because she isn't using any of the proper products. You know, with a blow dry, I like to use a styling product with a heat protectant. Um, you can use Glitterati. And then I like to use a cream product with a lot of hydration. You can use electric rain for that. I mean, it's really up to you. You can add products here and there. You can put some oil on the ends of her hair. Definitely next time, please prep your blow dry with the proper products. That will help this process go by so much faster. It'll make your blowout so much smoother. My little secret is to use dry shampoo. You can use mine. It's called Club Kid Dry Shampoo. It'll be released on January 17th, which will make your blow dry last twice as long. I love to do that on clients. It's such a great little secret because when your oils come out of your scalp, they're quickly absorbed by the bit of powder from the dry shampoo and it makes your blow last so long and it really lasts like twice as long than usual. So dry shampoo after a blow dry, awesome. Check out Club Kid, it's linked below. We're going at it, girl. I mean, at least she's giving it a try, you know? <laughs> at least she's trying. We have to give her a round of applause for that, come on. I mean, I'll take it, man. At least you tried. And we're using some kind of oil serum. <sighs> yeah. Is that how we're ending it here? When I blow dry my hair, I like it to have some body rather than it being totally, totally straight. What happened? <laughs> oh, 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 what happened here? These ends look f rough. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Let's take a point off for that. I don't know what we're at anymore, but this is what we're at, I think. I think we're at like a five or so. Jesus, okay. Why don't I tell you guys what I think you should have done here? So I think where we went wrong is majorly the sectioning, mainly the products that she didn't use. She didn't spend enough time working each section. It's really important to follow that blow dryer and brush all the way down the hair to the ends and really focus on those ends. That is the part of the hair that is usually the most difficult to get smooth because it is the oldest part of your hair. It's been through the most, it has the most damage. It just needs extra love and care um, and the proper products. I can't stress that enough. There's not much good about this blow dry. Oh, I'm sorry, you, you're a beautiful woman, but the blow dry ain't it. You can do the Farrah Fawcett thing, just make sure it's smooth and nicely blown out. You know, we all have our own styles and I appreciate that if you, that's your style. I'm gonna leave her with, I think, five points on the board. That is your score. You got crushed by the first contestant, but that's okay. We learned something from this video. Ah, maybe what not to do with a blow dry. Maybe. Let's move on. And our last 
And final contestant is Miriam Hampton. Good luck to you. We're all rooting for you, Miriam. We are. Besides me. Full curly to straight natural hair routine to cleanse, condition, blow dry, flat iron. That's quite the title. I have to give it to you. You would win if it was a competition for the longest title. Go Miriam. All right, let's watch what she does to her curly hair to get it nice and straight and flat ironed or whatever the hell she's doing. Let's check it out. After I let my hair air dry for a few hours, I will go ahead and start with the blow dry. Before I start- Show me your hair. Process, I always make sure to use a heat protectant. And today I'm gonna be using the Damage Remedy Protect it, girl. We made to repair and protect hair from heat styling. Okay, so she has beautiful locks. Oh, they're so pretty. I am obsessed with her hair. I don't even think she should be blow drying it, but I wanna see how long this hair gets. That is what I'm most excited about. I feel like it's gonna be down to here and it's gonna be just spectacular. Um, So she is prepping the hair with a sort of cream heat protectant, which I think is so perfect for her. This is awesome. I just love cream products when you're going for styling. Coat the hair better, they last longer. I think oils are awesome too, but more used at the bottom of the hair rather than all over. God, I just finished speaking and I looked over and there was just something going wrong already and you maybe know what it is by now. She's not using a concentrator nozzle. Why? Is this the world we live in? If we're not using concentrated nozzles, I don't want to be part of this world. Um, no, I do actually, it's fine. She has 10 points. She lost one. That brings her down to nine points. <laughs> oh, guys, don't hate me. Don't hate me. We're knocking off another point here. We're down to eight. You know why? Do you want to know why? She is taking the blow dryer with no nozzle and just holding the hair strands out and blow drying. I understand that she's going for a fast method here. It's just not an effective way to blow dry hair like this. In my opinion, again, this is all subjective. You are you can have your own opinion here. I mean, I'm guessing she's gonna go in with a flat iron after. You're not gonna ever get a good, smooth, flat ironed result if you're not taking the time to first blow dry with a proper brush. You're never gonna get all those roots completely straight unless you spend literally three hours when you could have just spent a little bit of extra time blow drying and then spent way less time flat ironing. Also, you guys, I forgot to mention before, but with curly hair, I highly recommend recommend a natural bristle brush. I like to use the Ibiza brushes a lot with curly hair. They give you a lot of tension, a lot to work with when pulling out the hair. It really, really gets that grip on there and you can get right in the roots really easily. It's great for natural curly hair because it's gonna really smooth the hair down a lot and tame that frizz and encourage a lot of shine in the hair. She's going in with that damn blow dryer. Listen, the girl's hair blow dries nicely, you can tell. Um, okay, so she is going in, combing it, brushing it out, then going right up to that root. And holy sh she's holding it there for a long time. That just stressed me out. And we're going down slowly. It's the shit I love to see. I love to see that. Wow, that was great. So she went really slow with the flat iron. I made a video about how to flat iron hair properly. This was one of the things I said people do the most that is incorrect is straighten the hair super fast. Just go right through it. In reality, you're gonna have to do more passes that way when you could just be doing one long, slow pass and have it be twice as effective. I like the size flat iron she's using too. It's not too small, it's not too large. It's gonna be great for her really, really long hair. Anything larger than that, I feel like the heat just isn't distributed properly. I have to say though, I feel like she's just not getting her root very well. Even though she's really holding it there, it still looks like it's quite frizzy. I feel like the, the this flat iron needs to be a lot hotter or she needs more product. You should definitely be getting a little bit of steam coming from the flat iron if you're using the proper amount of products. Product just burns off a little bit, creates a little bit of steam when it's sort of working in my opinion. I don't know if that's a scientific fact, but um, I always seem to get better blow dries and better straightenings when it has a little bit of steam coming off. And I see a little bit happening there. She can afford to really glob on the product because she has curly hair and curly hair is a lot more dry than say straight hair. It's gonna be very dry and it's very long. So it's even more 
dry. So being heavy handed with that product at first will be great for her hair. Okay, so there's definitely some frizz there still. Definitely not as straight as I would have liked to see it. She's gonna have to lose a point here. She needs a lot more hydration in there. It would have been a lot easier to straighten if she had more moisture in there and more product. So now the first girl and Miriam are tied for seventh. Let's see if she loses any more points for her styling techniques. Maybe they might tie. Okay, so we see a little bit of steam coming off there. That's great. Okay, I like that. I might not be able to see the steam because it's on a white background. That's the other thing, so don't come for me. But God, her hair is so long and luxurious and beautiful. Oh, I love to see it. I really do. And I love that she's following the brush with her flat iron. That's a great way to make sure that all the tangles are out before the flat iron hits. Otherwise, if you don't brush the hair and follow the brush with the flat iron, you're gonna end up actually flat ironing those knots that you have into your hair and it's not gonna be good and it's gonna create a lot more frizz. So make sure it's very combed out before you go through with a flat iron. Oh, dude, her hair is so pretty though. Oh, it's so long and luscious. Oh, we're giving a little trim now, okay. Yeah, I mean, she could definitely use like a good like two inches off that at those ends. I think it'd be really beneficial for her. It's quite pretty. I don't know how much more I can say. I wish those ends were more polished. Is it bad? No. Is it great? No. I could use a lot more shine. Maybe like a shine spray to finish it off. We're using a cream here. I think it's beautiful, but those roots, man, I don't know. So at the end of a blow dry like this or a straightening process, I really like to take a comb and just pick up a paper thin section at the root and get really in there and get it really straight because that is the place that people see the most. And you wanna make sure that root right here is so smooth and beautiful. And that was just not done here. I'm gonna take a point off for that. <gasps> Leaving her at a six. Scandal. Scandaly. Scandalo. Scandalous. Scandalous. Okay, so that was Miriam's straightening routine. Was it awesome? No. Was it the worst? No. I think she looks great. I think she's adorable. I think she's so pretty. Um, and obviously, I'm being a very hard critic today. But that leaves her with a six. Ooh. <laughs> so that means that Miss Gabriella, our first video we watched today, she has today's best hair care routine for going from curly to straight hair. There were just a few different things she could have improved on, but overall, it was a great job she did. Congratulations, you win absolutely nothing. <laughs> bragging rights, you, you get bragging rights. <laughs> I enjoyed that. I love watching people's different hair care routines and just seeing how different people take care of their hair. I think it's quite interesting. Hope you guys find it interesting too. And maybe you can learn a thing or two from this video um, on how to improve your own hair care routine. And like I said earlier, I do have dry shampoo coming out with my brand X Mondo, and I'm so excited. You guys have been asking for dry shampoo for so long. Dry shampoo is one of my favorite products ever. It's something I use all the time on literally everybody. So you can check out the products specs below with the link to my website and our product will be on sale officially tomorrow january 17th so get your hands on it and you'll love it i swear it's amazing ah. and don't forget to follow me on instagram at bradmondo nyc and on twitter and on tiktok if you really want to and follow my hair care brand x Mondo hair for new product updates as soon as they come out thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to live your extra life and I'll see you next time. Bye.